citizens of the reject nation you read the title of this video correctly i have not seen willy wonka in the chocolate factory mention that in our wonka trailer reaction i did with john and coy you see every single month i put together a giant list of movies i send it out to all the hosts and i find out who has not seen what so I can do the proper pairings and blah, 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 blah. And I am the only one on the channel who has not seen this classic. So you're getting a Greg Solo today. With that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, please go ahead, leave a like on this video. Also subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified when we got something that pops up in your notification feed that piques your interest. Thank you to Prepper for helping us edit down these highlights. Also, massive thank you to all who have joined our Patreon for the month of December. And just this entire year, it's been our most successful year thus far over there you can get the full length scratch watch along it's where you sync up with your own copy of willy wonk on the chocolate factory but john and i also cover several things over there exclusively with highlights and watch alongs included the timothy chalamet's uh, wonka movie finally coming out figure now is the perfect time to finally cover this because of algorithm stuff i'm already in the mood for chocolate now I know this tune. I've heard this tune. I think I like no, kind of know the Oompa Loompa song as well. God, I'm in a chocolatey mood already. Comment below, what is your favorite chocolate? I love me some Reese's Pieces. Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, let me be clear. Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. I appreciate the production design and making sure every kid was wearing just vibrant colors. They look so happy to be children. Man, listen, Wonka has got a new one today. A new one? Scrum Bibbleumptious Bar. Scrum Bibbleumptious Bar? Scrum Trulescent. How does he do it? Boy, do you ask a fish how it swims? No. Or a bird how it flies? No, you do not. They do it because they were born to do it. Just like Willy Wonka was born to be a candy man. Hmm. Oh, we're in a song already. Sprinkle it with dew. Comfort in chocolate and a miracle or two. It's a candy man. Aw. The candy van. <laughs> the candy man can. Ooh, I don't think I've heard this song. <laughs> Who can take a rainbow? Wrap it in a sigh. Who can take a rainbow? Like how back then they would trust this man with a bunch of children. Will he want to make everything he makes satisfying and delicious? What a way to build up Willy Wonka right away. Wishes. <laughs> That's some great editing right there. Very well composed so far. The candy man can and makes the world taste good. Fickle Groobers. What are the names of these candies? Cause the candy man thinks it should. That's Charlie. Why wasn't he bonding with the rest of the children? It's payday, Mr. Joe Peck. You're right. Where's my money? There you are. Thanks. I know we're only a couple minutes in, but this movie's already conveying such a sense of optimism, I want to say. Feels a lot more foreboding than I was expecting it to. That's a really cool shot. Did they build some shit? That looks great. Up the airy mountain, down the rushing glen, dare not go a-hunting for fear of little men. Fear of little men? You see. It's rude. Nobody ever goes in. Nobody ever comes out. <laughs> False and Curtis is not. Blades jangling around. Charlie's late. He works too hard for a little boy. He should have some time to play. You train him now. Wow, what an uncomfortable sleeping situation. What the hell is going on here? Is this your supper, Grandpa? I'm fed up with cabbage water. It's not enough. Charlie, it's all we have. Charlie you watch that foul language. How about this? Charlie, where'd you get that? It's my first payday. Good for you, Charlie. We'll have a real banquet. Oh, he used his first payday to give them bread. From now on, I'm going to pay for your tobacco. Why won't my nephew do that for me? Not since the tragic day that Willy Wonka locked it. Why do you lock it? Because all the other chocolate makers in the world were sending in spies to steal Mr. Wonka's secret recipes, especially Slugworth. Oh, that Slugworth, he was the worst. Hmm. 
Mr. Walker shouted, I shall be ruined. Close the factory. And that's just what he did. With the Candyman song, it makes him seem like, oh, so pleasant. And then this side of him makes him sound scary. Three years later, the most amazing thing happened. The factory started working again, and more delicious candies were coming out than ever before. He found hope. But the gates stayed locked. Someone must be helping Mr. Wonka work the factory. Thousands must be helping him. But who? Children from Cambodia. Charlie Bucket. Yes, Mr. Turkentown. I shall need an assistant. Come and give me a hand. Foreshadowing. What do you think it makes? I don't know, sir. Of course you don't know. You don't know because only I know. If you knew and I didn't know, then you'd be teaching me instead of me teaching you. <laughs> what a sassy little teacher. And I'll take my own special mixture. Are you ready? Good lad, pour. <laughs> this is for very big waltz. What's going on out there? Is this going to come back in later in the movie? What's happening? Willy Wonka's opening his factory. He's going to let people in. Ooh. Class dismissed. This does some surprisingly impressive world building. Even as an audience member, I'm going, yeah, I'd be trying to like rack up as many Wonka bars as possible right now. To the five people who find them will come the most fabulous prize one could wish for. A lifetime supply of chocolate. Ooh. They're all crazy. The man's a genius. He'll sell a million bars. Greatest form of capitalism. Wonka bars are beginning to disappear from candy store shelves at a rate to boggle the mind. Truly, it is incredible the way that Wonka mania has descended upon the globe. <laughs> it's got this, like, weird dual layer of... Of a wonder and semi threatening at the same time? Dreams, Doctor, and I still can't stop myself from believing them. To believe in one's dreams is a manifestation of insanity, and the sooner you accept this, the sooner you'll get well. Well, color me insane, Doctor. But I dreamed the Archangel appeared and whispered into my ear and told me where to find a Golden Wonka ticket. And what exactly did he say? <laughs> he wants to know. <laughs> I mean, you said just Shut now. Shut up, Offsetter, and tell me where the ticket is. <laughs> The first golden ticket was found in the small town of Dusselheim, Germany. Damn Germans. Today, right here in Dusselheim, the unexpected discovery of the first Wonka golden ticket. Man, there's some great rhythm to this. Son of our most prominent pork butcher, Augustus Gluck, the fame of Western Germany, an example for the whole world. Yes, congratulations. You're a hard worker. Very sorry for Wonka. It's going to cost an unfortunate fudge. <laughs> Mr. Gluck, <laughs> would you mind saying... <laughs> I the golden ticket. Eating is his hobby, you know. We encourage him. He wouldn't do it unless he. The hell is going on here? Some scary German scientist. Happy birthday! Here you are, Charlie. It's terrific. We each knitted a bit. Grandma Georgina, Grandma Josephine, and me. And here's a little gift from Grandpa George and me. So they can never get out of that bed. It must smell so bad in there. Open it, Charlie. Let's see that golden ticket. It's not fair to raise his hope. Never mind. Go on, open it, Charlie. I want to see that gold. Stop it. I'm going to buy so many lottery tickets after I'm done filming. I got it! Where? Where? Let's yeah. see. Fooled you, didn't I? You thought I really had it. What was the point of that? What was your intention, young man? I want you to be the first to find a golden ticket, Daddy. I oh, know, Angel. We're doing the best we can. Oh, my goodness. Someone comment below the fact of how much money they spent on chocolates and wrappers. They're jealous of me. Sweetheart, I can't push them no harder. 19,000 bars an hour they're shelling. 760,000 they've done so far. Oh my God. You're going to be very unpopular around here, Henry, if you don't deliver soon. I hate to see you unhappy. I won't talk to you ever again. You're a rotten, mean family. <laughs> What a little brat. I got it! I got it! I would have just kept it for myself. Wait, anyway, he was the one with the the, the German boy. <laughs> just had a total Ryan George moment there. He was the one with the German boy. <laughs> Whichever of the five continents we're on, the great search for Wonka bars continues. Look at that person in the background watching. 
we are beginning to see signs of anxiety. Every hour on the hour, new shipments are being sent to different points around the globe. This moves like a Scorsese movie. Miss Violet Beauregard, finder of Wonka's golden ticket number three. Parents, Mr. Beauregard, a prominent local politician. Hi, friend, Sam Beauregard here, Square Deal Sam to you with... Here it is, golden ticket number three, and it's all mine. Tell us how it happened, Violet. This poor Charlie kid. Because I laid off the gum and switched to candy bars instead. Now, of course, I'm right back on gum. I chew it all day except at mealtimes when I stick it beyond my ear. Violet. Pull it, mother. A bunch of rotten children. Now, this piece of gum here is one that I've been chewing on for three months solid, and that's a world record. Eesh. What is the purpose of this child? He's the guy with the German boy. How does he get to all these children? Just sneaks up on them right in their ear. I wanted to tell you something. They found a third ticket today. Did they? No, oh, Mrs. Bucket just doesn't even believe that it's possible. There are only two tickets left, you know. Pretty soon, just one. And I wonder who the lucky ones will be. And in case you're wondering if it'll be me, it won't be. Just in case you're wondering, you can count me out. No, don't give me that attitude, Charlie. There are a hundred billion people in this world, and only five of them will find golden tickets. And after this contest is over, you'll be no different from the billions of others who didn't find one. Wow, you are not a very empowering mom. One day things will change. When? When will they change? For things to change, you have to change. It's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one happen than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. You get blue like everyone, but me and Grandpa Joe can make your troubles go. Oh, okay, she's just protecting him. These poor people. I don't mean just financially poor. <laughs> you see a star, just follow it and <laughs> Oh, what a great shot. Pretty soon the sky is gonna clear up. Oh, whoa, they pulled out from the shadow like that. This kid has a lot going on behind his eyes. I keep saying kid, but he's definitely older than me now. If he's still around, I don't know. Lucky winner number four. Now, the name soon to be heard around the universe is Mr. Mike TV. Hey, Mike, do you think we might shut that thing off? No, are you crazy? <laughs> he doesn't even give a shit about the news. Why are all these children so snotty? You like the killings, huh? What do you think life's all about? Mike, would you tell us this? Wait till I get a real one. Colt 45. Oh, jeez. Pop won't let me have one yet, will you, Pop? Not till you're 12, son. <laughs> Not till you're 12. Who is this man they keep letting into people's children? They just let, let him around children. They gotta stop it. Grandpa, that money was for tobacco. I told you, Charlie, I've given it up. Oh, these two. Which end shall I open first? That end. Just a tiny bit. Like this? <laughs> this kid, who is now a senior citizen, is so adorable. Here goes. I bet those golden tickets make the chocolate taste terrible. Aww. Aww. I love him so much. I kidnapped my husband 12 hours ago. I'll give them anything. Anything they want. The hell's this plot line? Go ahead, we're listening. What did they ask for? They want your case of Wonka bars. <laughs> it's your husband's life or your case of Wonka bars. <laughs> How long will it give me to think it over? <laughs> this is so well done. <laughs> that was so funny. The fifth and last golden ticket has just been found. Right here in Paraguay. Alberto Mignoletta. The multi-millionaire owner of gambling casinos throughout South America. Damn one percenters. The little boy's got to have something in this world to hope for. What's he got to hope for now? Who's going to tell him? Let's not wake him. He'll find out soon enough. Oh, poor kid. I mean, I know what the plot of what's going to happen, but, it's, but man, the immediate moment, you really feel it. <laughs> Oh, 
I have no idea what he just picked up. Is that some kind of currency? I'd like a bar of chocolate, please. A slugworth sizzler? A Wonka scrum diddly umptious? Whichever's the biggest. Try a Wonka scrum diddly umptious. Now that all the tickets have been found, I don't have to hide them anymore. <laughs> He's such a sweet kid, I just feel so bad for him. <laughs> You'll get a stomachache if you swallow it like that. Bye. Bye now. Like the, just like the uh, sadness and hopefulness. I just feel it. He's a good actor. This old man now. I think I'll buy just one more. Why not try a regular Wonka bar this time? That gambler from Paraguay made up a phony ticket. That means there's one golden ticket still floating around somewhere. <laughs> Seriously, who is this kid? <laughs> I, do, I have no idea who he is. <laughs> And the direction on this, the emphasis on the chocolate bar. Hey, you got it! You got the last golden ticket. The kids found the last golden ticket. And then that guy with the scar shows up to whisper something into his ear. Come on, Charlie! Hold on to that ticket. Run for it, Charlie! Run straight home and don't stop till you get there. Ah. Yo, this is some touching ass shit right now. <laughs> and I knew this was going to happen too. <laughs> That's when you know something's freaking effective. Who are you? <laughs> May I introduce myself? Please. Oscar Slugworth, president of Slugworth Chocolates Incorporated. Uh... He's a spy. Mr. Wonka is at this moment working on a fantastic invention. Uh-huh. The everlasting gobstopper. Ew, that sounds gross. So all I want you to do is to get hold of just one everlasting gobstopper and bring it to me so that I can find the secret Magic formula. Christopher Lloyd from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Your reward will be 10,000 of these. Think it over, will you? No, no, no. A new house for your family. He's got morals. Charlie would never... <laughs> I don't know jack about that plot. It's a prime example of solid execution. Even if you you know that, like, yeah, I know he's supposed to get the ticket and go to the factory, but damn, does it work? The last one of the bacon sits on the papers. I found some money in the street and I bought a Wonka bar and a ticket was in it. <laughs> Present this ticket at the factory gates at 10 o'clock in the morning of the first day of October. You may bring with you one member of your own family, but no one else. Bring one of the grandpas who doesn't talk. She says I can take somebody with me. I wish you could go. This movie's gonna break me. I can feel it. Oh, man. <laughs> Charlie. I did not expect it to be so touching. Ah, that's good, Charlie. He's gonna float like the exorcist. Damn, he's doing it. Oh, are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm uh. fine, Charlie. Oh, easy, Dad. Joe. Do these other two not talk? Look at me. He's standing. Kick Charlie in the head. I never thought my life could be. Oh, they know when to cue these musical numbers, man. <laughs> so well, so well calculated. <laughs> Suddenly, I begin to see a bit of good luck for me. Not gonna lie, guys. I thought this movie might be a bit of a chore, but I am loving it so much. <laughs> I never had a chance to shine. Never a happy song to sing. Oh, he's going around and around. The world is mine. What an amazing thing. What a catchy ass song. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day when I would face the world as a Which is like boisterous wonder. <laughs> Luxury, cause I'd have it couldn't be done. But it could be done. We haven't even gotten Willy Wonka yet. <laughs> dream that I would climb over the moon in ecstasy, but nevertheless it's there that I'm shortly about to be. What a great song. Uh, it's like old. I, I don't... Have I heard this song before? 
I must have at some point in my life. But it can be done. I never dreamed that. Oh, wow. He's really moving. And with a golden ticket, it's a golden day. Okay, now it's getting to the point where you're mocking everyone else on the bed. I really had this like preconceived belief that I would be sitting here going, all right, let's just wait till uh, Willy Wonka shows up and then maybe it'll become really fun. But we're like 40 minutes in and I'm still like, I'm really enjoying the hell out of it. Hi, Cornelia, sweetie. I've still got it. Now is this first trick. God, your job must hurt so bad. <laughs> Look at this chocolate man as a scar. I want to go in first before anybody else. Anything you say, sweetheart? Save some room for later, Augustus Liebling. Yo, kid, you need to get some blood work done. Wow, the build. Maybe this isn't a good idea that I'm watching this before the Timothy Chalamet one. I'm just going to compare it the whole time. Oh, he's got a limp. I thought it was just like a stylistic choice, like a Monopoly man or something. Does Monopoly man need a cane for walking purposes? Well, clearly all the chocolate has affected the circulation in his feet due to the diabetes he developed. <laughs> Great beat. What? Oh! Hey! He didn't need the cane after all. He's a trickster! I'm so glad you could come. This is going to be such an exciting day. I hope you enjoy it. I think you will. <laughs> He's got so much... There's a natural mystery about him. Augustus Clue! Augustus, my dear boy, how good to see you, and in such fine shape. <laughs> yeah. I'm Mike TV. Mike? Well, oh. you're dead. Wonderful to meet you, Mike. And Mrs. TV, how do you do? What an adorable little boy you have. Thank you. Just over there. That speed on him. I'm so happy for you. And who is this gentleman? My grandfather, Grandpa Joe. Delighted to meet you, sir. Overjoyed, enraptured, entranced. Are we ready? Yes. Solid vernacular. Hats, coats, galoshes over here. But hurry, please. We have so much time and so little to see. Wait a minute. Strike that. Reverse it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoa. Little surprises around every corner, but nothing dangerous. And as soon as your outer vestments are in hand, we'll begin. Oh, that's fun. Floods, fire, frost, a frippery. What? I can't keep up with this. Sign anything for this tour. I can't see what it says in the book. <laughs> I don't sign anything without my lawyer. My broker don't sign anything either. Then she don't go in. I'm sorry, rules of the house. I want to go in. Don't you dare stop me. Just sign it. You're always making things difficult. Nicely handled, Baruka. She's a girl who knows where she's going. I like how he's like alluring, but you don't know if you could trust him. God, most of you are very unlikable. Ah, here we are. Oh, don't be a darn fool, Walker. That's the way we came in. It is. He is a magician. Some kind of fun house. Why, having fun? I've had a... <laughs> How clever. <gasps> hey, the room is Whoa. smaller. No, it's not. An He's illusion. getting bigger. Where's the chocolate? I doubt if there is any. What is the point of building a factory like this? And some of my realities become dreams. And almost everything you'll see huh. is eatable. Edible. <laughs> Man, I'm starving. Now, don't get overexcited. Don't lose your head, Augustus. We wouldn't want anyone to lose that. Yet. He's such a great listener. Like the way he responds to everyone. Hold your breath. Make a wish. Count to three. Come with me and you'll be I know this song! <laughs> world of pure imagination. It's the opening song. <laughs> into your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to play multifaceted. If you want to view 
paradise. Simply look around and view it. Are the stairs edible? Hurry up, pilot. This way, Grandpa. You enjoy that chocolate. Eat everything. Can you eat the ground? No, in my luck, I would eat the thing that is not actually edible. Oh, oh my God. What is this place? That tune, there's something that feels like questionably malevolent about it. Living there, you'll be free. Who are you, Wonka? It's industrial waste, that. You've ruined your watershed, Wonka. It's polluted. It's chocolate. That's chocolate. That's chocolate. Two very different responses. 10,000 gallons an hour. And look at my waterfall. That's the most important thing. It's mixing my chocolate. It's actually churning my chocolate. Uh-huh. Grandpa, look over there across the river. They're little men. The, the Oompa Loompas. Are Oompa Loompas problematic now? Must be creaming and sugaring time. Well, they can't be real people. Well, of course they're real people. Can't be real people. From Loompa Land. Loompa Land? There's no such place. Hey, Mr. Lady. Wonka, I am a teacher of geography. Oh, well, then you know all about it. And what a terrible country it is. And the poor little Oompa Loompas were so small and helpless, they would get gobbled up right and left. He's so, so sincere in his delivery, man. And he's getting such a great listener. Hey, Daddy, I want an Oompa Loompa. I'll get you one before the day is out. I want an Oompa Loompa now! Oh, my God. Look at Augustus. No worry, he can't drink at all. Don't do that, you're contaminating my entire river. Please, I beg you, Augustus! Ah! Ah! Don't just stand there, do something! Help. Police. Murder. <laughs> it looks like he's drowning. Dive in, save him! Oh, it's too late. <laughs> so dismissive. There's a stroke going up the pipe. Call a plumber. Stuck in the pipe there, isn't he, Wonka? He's blocking all the chocolate. Well, what happens now? Right? Oh, the pressure will get him out. It's all part of the plan. He's oh. done! He did it into marshmallows in five seconds. Impossible, my dear lady. That's absurd. Because that pipe doesn't go to the marshmallow room. It goes to the fudge room. <laughs> Take Mrs. Gloop straight to the fudge room, but look sharp, or her little boy's liable to get poured into the boiler. Goodbye, Mrs. Gloop. One down. I've got a perfect puzzle for you. These are the rest of the lyrics. What do you get oh my god. Down sweets? Eating as much as an elephant eats. Oh my god, it's a music video. Oompa 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 doo. Oh da. All I know is Oompa Loompa Doopa Doo. -doo. So he rescued the Oompa Loompas, but turned them into his own workers. But are they happier? What's the deal with the Oompa Loompas? All aboard, everybody. Uh, ladies first, and that means Veruca. If she's a lady, I'm a vermicious knit. Vermicious knit. I love that phrasing. Vermicious knit. What a fun little ride. What a great set. Hang on, where are we going? I don't know, but I don't like what's that tunnel up there. Hey, Wonka, I want off! I don't mind this ride, Daddy! Wonka, do me a favor. With terminal velocity, have we in... Uh, what, what the hell is going on? Hang on, darling. Close your eyes and hang on the side. Yeah. Oh, this is, this is creepy as hell. What the hell is going on? Tell that little guy to turn us around, Wonka! Is this just revealing internally what they're experiencing? This is like a drug trip. Here's a hurricane of blowing. Not a speck of light is showing, so the danger must be growing. Damn, some good slam poetry. And they're certainly not showing any signs that they are slowing. I believe this guy could kill them. <laughs> Dear inventing room, no messing about, no touching, no tasting, no telling. And whoever doesn't obey the rules gets in trouble. I just get the impression this movie was a production nightmare. 
But damn, how cool would it be to walk on this set? This is the most secret machine in my entire factory. This is the one that's really going to sizzle old Slugworth. What's it do? Uh-oh. Would you like to see? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've seen that still before. But what's it do? Can't you see? It makes everlasting gobstopper. That's the thing. You can suck them and suck them and suck them, and they'll never get any smaller. How do you make them? I'm a trifle deaf in this ear. Speak a little louder next time. <laughs> the sarcasm on him is so well done. And never show them to another living soul as long as you all shall live. Agreed? Agreed. Fingers crossed. And one for you, and one for you. Yeah, hey, what about Charlie? And one for Charlie. What happens if you take it out of your mouth? How do you preserve it? She's my revolutionary, non-pollutionary mechanical wonder. Whoa, they really build this stuff? This little piece of gum is a three-course dinner. I wouldn't do that. I really wouldn't. So long as it's gum, then that's... <laughs> Damn, the, the, his delivery is perfect. It's tomato soup. It's hot and creamy. I can actually feel it running down my throat. Stop, don't. <laughs> Here it comes. Blueberry pie and cream. It's the most marvelous blueberry pie I've ever face. tasted. Holy Toledo, what's happening to your face? She's changing colors. Oh, she's a violet turning violet, violet thingy. Yeah, but your face is turning blue. Oh, no, violet, blue? You're turning violet, violet. It is that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's happening? They're blowing up like a balloon. Like a blueberry. Please. You've really done it this time, haven't you, Wonka? Hey, he said not to eat it. Would you roll the young lady down to the juicing room at once, please? What for? For squeezing. <laughs> I don't look confident. Sure. Can't you win all day long? That's why you can't you come on camera. Now you're just having fun with her. I got a blueberry for a daughter. Where is fancy bread? In the heart or in the head? Shall we roll on? That is a... Good question. I love these, like, bars that he drops. No pun intended. Wonka bars he keeps dropping. What's it making, Mr. Wonka? Fizzy lifting drinks. They fill you with gas, and the gas is so terrifically lifting that it lifts you right off the ground like a balloon. Whoa. But I daren't sell it yet. It's still too powerful. Oh, come no, on, let us try some, please. No, absolutely not. There'd be children floating around all over the place. <laughs> Let's take a drink, Charlie. Nobody's watching. No. Yeah. A small one won't hurt us. Whoops. No guys. No guys. Mmm, not bad. I can't understand why. Oh, 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 we're in big trouble. It's a very interesting structure because it's so much about Charlie in the beginning. And then Charlie kind of takes a back seat once we get here. Oh, oh, this is great. Oh, that's cool. Rather than them having a torturous experience, they're having a joyous one. Wow. What kind of set is this? I'm going to lie. Hey, Grandpa, I can't get down. Pull him down. We're in trouble, Charlie. I can't stop. It's pulling me in. It would still be fun to try this drink out, though. Mr. Walker, please turn off the fan. Oh, oh. <gasps> <gasps> they got to burp your way down. Burp. Burp again. Atta boy, come on. That's kind of gross. They can't be doing what they're doing, but they are. They have to. I haven't met the Oompa Loompa yet who could do it. These are the geese that lay the golden egg. I love how he just acknowledges that they have to. He just like turns right to them as if they haven't left the room. The geese are very temperamental. That's why we have the egg decator. The egg decator can tell the difference between a good egg and a bad egg. I love all the props they built. If it's a good egg, it's shined up and shipped out all over the world. Have they created some type of, like, attraction where you can go visit these things? Hey, Daddy, I want a golden goose. Daddy will get you a golden <laughs> goose as soon as we get home. No, I want one of those. I want one of those. I want one now. How much do you want for the golden goose? They're not for sale. Name your price. She can't have one. It's interesting we didn't cut to walk on that. By the way... What? I want a feast. You ate before you came to the factory. I want a bean feast. Oh. What a little brat. No nuts and fruitcake with no nuts, so good 
you could go nuts. You're gonna have all those things when you get home. No, no. I wonder what she was really like on set. Is she, what are, was she, uh, was she pleasant? I want the whole world. I want to lock it all up in my pocket. It's my bar of chocolate. Give it to me now. You're distracting the Oompa Loompas from doing their job. And if I don't get the things I am after. This especially perturbs me. Oh my god, what a devil woman. I hope one of the eggs falls on her head. Oh god. She was a bad egg. Oh. Where's she gone? To the furnace. <laughs> it's so matter of fact. Hold on! Veruca! Sweetheart! Daddy's coming! That was a horrible egg. Oompa, loompa, doompa dee doo. I've got another puzzle for you. There's a sadness in his performance, too. Blame? The mother and the father. I love how they get these, like, music video subtitle videos. If you're not spoiled, then you will go far. You will live in happiness, too. They are instilling life lessons. Places, please. Dance is about to begin. Everybody set? Is this gonna go fast, Grandpa? It should, Charlie. It's got more gas in it than a politician. <laughs> I love that one. Stronger than lions! Ah! <laughs> 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 Wow, that is awesome. What was that we just went through? Hasha Wakano. Is that Japanese? No, that's Wonka Wash spelled backwards. <laughs> There's dangerous stuff inside. Wonka Vision. Television. Uh, it's Wonka Vision. Uh, it's Wonka Vision. <laughs> you photograph something, and then the photographs are split up into millions of tiny pieces, and they go whizzing through the air down to your TV set where they're all put together again in the right order. You should open your mouth a little wider when you speak. I shall now send this chocolate bar from one end of the room to the other. Action! But does it cause your the, the chocolate Flying to be radiated? Our heads in a million pieces. Whoa! Now watch the screen. There it is. It's real. Taste it. It's delicious. It's just gotten smaller, that's all. It's perfect. It's unbelievable. It's a miracle. It's a TV dinner. It's Wonka Vision. It's Wonka Vision. Now, can you send other things? What about people? Get in there, kid. But it might have some messy results. Look at me, I'm gonna be the first person in the world to be sent by television. Hey, get away from that thing! Stop, don't come back. <laughs> I love how like disconcerted he actually is. Where are you? He's up there, in a million pieces. He's so not faced. He's gonna be tiny though. You're not grasping the consequences of are you little boy? Where are you taking me? I don't want to go in there. Be quiet. How will he grow? Well, fortunately, small boys are extremely springy and elastic, so I think we'll put him in my special taffy pulling machine. Just <laughs> swinging him around. Uh... You'll find the boy in his mother's purse, but be extremely careful. Mm. Parting is such sweet sorrow. It's kind of a physically demanding movie on the actors, isn't it? To me. I'm listening. What do you get from a glut of TV? I don't know. Pain in the neck and an IQ of three. Amen. Why don't you try simply reading a book? Too much work. Oompa. 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 Oompa dee doo. And that was the end of them. Mr. Wonka, what's going to happen to the other kids? I promise you they'll be quite all right. When they leave here, they'll be completely restored to their normal, terrible old selves. <laughs> Yeah, what do we do now, Mr. Wonka? Straight up the stairs. You'll find the way. I'm terribly busy. Whole day wasted. Goodbye to you both. Whole day wasted. What happened? Did we do something wrong? Aww.
Everything's in half here. I just wanted to ask about the chocolate. Well, when does he get it? He doesn't, because he broke the rules. Under Section 37B of the contract signed by him, I shall forfeit all rights herein and herein contained, etc., etc. It's kind of a con. You stole fizzy lifting drinks. You bumped into the ceiling, which now has to be washed, so you get nothing. Well, you're kind of cruel. How can you do a thing like this? Build up a little boy's hopes and then smash all his dreams to pieces. You're an inhuman monster! I said good day! Oh, that's so sad. Mr. Wonka? He won't give it over. Charlie? You won! Forgive me for putting you through this. Please, forgive me. Come in, Mr. Wilkinson. Charlie, meet Mr. Wilkinson. Oh, my God! I had to test you, Charlie. And you passed the test. I did not actually see that coming. <laughs> this is the great glass Wonkavator. It's an elevator. It's a Wonkavator. <laughs> there it goes. You mean we're going up and out? But this roof is made of glass. It'll shatter into a thousand pieces. But we'll be cut to ribbons. Probably. <laughs> this is actually kind of terrifying. Whoa. With the pure imagination. How did you like the chocolate factory, Charlie? I think it's the most wonderful place in the whole world. I'm very pleased to hear you say that. Because I'm giving it to you. <laughs> You're giving Charlie the... I can't go on forever. And I don't really want to try. So who can I trust to run the factory when I leave? Ah. Uh... That's why I decided a long time ago that I had to find a child. A very honest, loving child to whom I can tell all my most precious candy-making secrets. Good thing you picked him at random. So the factory's yours, Charlie. You can move in immediately. What happens to the, the rest whole of The whole family. I want you to bring them all. Really? Everyone? Don't forget what happened to the man who suddenly got everything he always wanted. What happened? He lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> what a great movie. This movie is actually so good. <laughs> Big f surprise. <laughs> oh my god. What happened to Peter Ostrom? Ostrom. Aloha Reject Nation, Greg here. So as many of you guys know, most of my days are a couple of hours of filming and then most of the time it's dedicated to like editing and a bunch of other computer work, often accumulating to like 10 to 12 hours a day. And on top of that, comfort food is like my life's biggest vice. But as many of you also know, working out and getting healthier has been a massive component for me this year in particular. So in this whirlwind, I have found myself a perfect ally for quick, healthy meals, America's number one meal kit, a meal kit that I have subscribed to prior to ever agreeing working with them. So yes, this is a genuine testimony. And that is, of course, for HelloFresh. And HelloFresh isn't just about ease. It's about bringing health and flavor to your doorstep. And this holiday season, forget about the stress of planning meals for your health conscious friends. Friends like me, who will breathe down the back of your neck being like, I can't eat that. That's unhealthy. So with HelloFresh, I'm looking forward to hosting holiday dinners that are not only delicious, but also cater to healthy lifestyles. Best part, the variety, it is incredible. I'm pescatarian, so they have these delicious meals just like Dijon onion crunch salmon over lemon broccoli spaghetti. And for my more plant-based days, the vegan maple carrot power bowls, they aren't just meals, they're culinary adventures. I learned the word culinary. During a long day, the last thing I want to do is spend a while cooking. And that's where HelloFresh's 15-minute meals are a lifesaver. They're quick, nutritious, and oh so tasty perfect for my nonstop lifestyle. So why not join me in making this holiday season both health-conscious and delicious with HelloFresh? With over 45 recipes and seasonal add-ons to choose from every week, there's always something new to try. And here's something to cheer about. Go to HelloFresh.com slash rejects free and use code rejects free for free breakfast for life. That accurate? That sounds way too good to be true. There's no f way that can be true. Go to HelloFresh.com slash rejects free and use code rejects free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box as long as your subscription is active. Tag your HelloFresh creations with hashtag HelloFresh picks and at HelloFresh. And let's cook up some fun and healthiness reject nation. Remember, it's America's number one meal kit. Okie dokie, ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls. 
Ah, I quite love this movie. Prior to starting it, I was a bit apprehensive. You see, when I was like really, really young, don't ask me what scene. I just remember having a thought when I was a kid going, oh, wait, no, okay, let me start this again. All righty, guys. Well, if you're listening to this on uh, Apple or Spotify, please rate that video. We got a Real Rejects podcast going for those watching us here on YouTube. I'm trying to... I'm trying to conduct this for two different audiences, one who just hear and one who can see. Anywho, uh, just watched Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, first time ever. And a little bit of background here. Probably should have given this on the, I said it on the Patreon one, but I should have given it on the YouTube one. So I did, I did see the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie, the one that Tim Burton did when it first came out in the theaters. I barely remember it. I mean that with the utmost sincerity barely remember what happens in that film uh i remembered like basically about that charlie eventually gets the chakra factory and then johnny depp's a little creepy um but i honestly kind of a part of my brain was was racking itself going he he gets does he get the chocolate fact i was like asking myself that i was like i think he gets the chocolate factory but i don't remember if he does and uh, yeah, it's like the idea, I c- definitely didn't remember it well enough to like be making comparisons or, or have an idea of, of like, oh, here's what the structure of the movie is. I don't even remember if this Slugworth or whatever the hell this guy's name is is, is in the Johnny Depp one or not. Like, So that was like the, the most association I had with it. And um, when I was a kid, I, I, I saw maybe like 30 seconds of this on TV and must have been like really, really young. And I went, this looks like an old movie. I don't want to watch it. And I just never did. But here I am now. And I I loved it. I really did love it. It, it, it is such a fascinating experience because while, you know, it while it is from an older era, I do find the way this movie is executed to feel rather timeless. Like I, I wasn't distracted by the period in which it was captured. If anything, like it actually helps amplify the experience and the magic behind it of making this feel even more fantastical by the era it's set in. So I don't know, like if, I guess my question that I'm asking is the year in which the, I don't know if this movie makes it explicitly clear when it takes place, like what year it does, because this is a, all a fictional world of, of this guy with this amazing chocolate factory and everyone just wants a piece of that candy. Uh, I, I don't know what year it takes place in, in, in the movie itself, but is it supposed to take place for wh- whatever year this movie came out in the 70s? Is this supposed to take place then? Does this take place in the 70s is what I'm asking? I don't know. You guys can let me know below. Uh, but I actually feel like the it, it encapsulates it more in a way that does have it feel a lot more magical due to that fact. Uh, and I, I love the production design of everything. It's everything is so vibrant. It pops. Uh, the entire film just had this sort of uh, whimsical elegance about it. It's it's structured in a in kind of an odd way. If there was one bit of criticism that I might, God, it's strange because the first like forty minutes you don't go to Willy Wonka. You're like kind of building him up, right? And I really love that part of the the movie a lot. Like my heart was so in it when it came to everyone looking for the golden tickets and kind of hopping around the world and seeing who's who and and how everyone responds to this. And it was really funny. It seemed like the, this play on society that I was really enjoying. And and Charlie, who is the guy who plays Charlie? My God, I gotta look him up. I, got, I just got to look him up, and I'm going to kill the dead air while I'm here. Uh, 1971 is when this came out. Because, yeah, I don't, I don't know if this this kid is still alive. Uh, he's not a kid anymore, that's for sure. Is he alive? Peter Ostrom. Did he only do one movie? Is that it? What happened to him? What happened to this guy? I don't even see, like, modern-day photos of him. Okay, well, he was in something called Remembering Gene Wilder uh, in 2023. So I imagine he's still around and kicking it a little bit. But anyway, um, I thought he was excellent. Uh, he, he really captured this sort of like innocence, this this purity that 
felt just so multi-layer. Like, yeah, he's got this like optimism, this hopefulness, and um, this uh, he exudes uh, empathy and all, all the basically all the qualities that Willy Wonka lists about him. You know, with the the honesty and the integrity. And, and at the same time, he's got this like resilience and perseverance about his attitude that I, that that I I, I love so much because it, whenever an obstacle was thrown his way, he would try to find a way to be optimistic. He never like got too down in the gutters about anything, and I I feel like just the way he was played was perfect. I really cared about him, and it you could feel kind of that the the way how true optimism ought to be executed is you got to have that feeling of uh, you're, you're constantly up against the wall of feeling defeated. And that's why you have to have optimism. For example, like if, if you were to pl- have courage, you must have an element of fear. Otherwise, what's the point of courage? Because courage has to be the thing that's counteracting against fear, right? And I really think he he embodied that so well. And like the relationship with his grandpa that I thought well, Grandpa Joe is the character's name. Uh, again, uh, you know, even though he is an elderly man, he I thought he had such a, a youthful spirit about him as well. And for him to be sort of this uh, storyteller and mentor to Charlie was great. Like, I just really love the characters. And I wasn't expecting that because they had such a curiosity and enthusiasm about them that, and, and so much support and love as well. So all that, like, layered onto it with, really catchy tunes and really catchy songs and and very appealing visuals and the way it's the movie's also edited it moved like the first 40 minutes kind of felt like it was edited sort of like a martin scorsese movie which which is the last thing i expected to say when going into a willy wonka film but it did remind me a bit of like a scorsese fast-paced editing style of something that he would have made in in the 70s but you know just a lot more pg friendly and less gangster catholic driven and so I really, I really loved it because there was such a youthful spirit about it uh, from beginning to end. And then when you get to like Willy Wonka, the movie then adapts. You know what it does? It's it's actually now that I'm thinking about like what the words I was about to say, it suddenly made me appreciate it because the first 40 minutes, while you do cut around to other people, it's still primarily you are watching it from Charlie's perspective. And, and then when you get to Willy Wonka, now you are the audience observing. Like you are one of the golden ticket winners who are on this journey with, with Willy Wonka. And, and you're just trying to figure out who this guy is because it's like Gene Wilder nailed it, you know. Um, I, I remember like not minding the, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Johnny Depp one. Uh, but clearly, I've never cared to revisit it. I don't really, it didn't leave an impression on me when I was younger. I, I definitely didn't hate it. I remember thinking it was creepier. Um, but I, but what, what they did here with, with Gene Wilder, and I, you know, and just kind of having a bit of an understanding of how Gene Wilder operates, I imagine it was very much creatively involved, more than we might expect. Uh, yeah, it was very eccentric, very whimsical. Uh, I think he does capture that creative innovative side of Willy Wonka uh, but yet there's that mystery the, the the secrecy behind him that it is very captivating and same time he's got the the dark humor and he's got this sarcasm and yet there's still a um a depth behind those eyes like I believe that whole speech at the end that that was the entire motive even if even if there was a bit of a ploy there in order to provoke Charlie into giving up the slug nugget they I don't remember what it was called the candy thing to to test him uh I I you still believe this this um this sadness and this melon there's a bit of like a melancholy and a bit of vulnerability to him I thought it's actually a really multi-layered performance, even though it's not one where you're like, ah, here's how he starts and here's his character arc or something like that that's like explicitly clear. And while a big part of it is to kind of keep you at a distance and make him mysterious and a bit like mischievous and do I really trust this guy? He seems a little bit scary, but I also kind of love him. I believed every, I, I felt like the unpredictability and the uh, overall ambiguity of Right, that's the right choice of words. The, the unpredictability, and ambiguity of of this character, Gene Wilder, just embodied it so well. 
uh, my initial impression, and I made a comment about it while I was doing the reaction, uh, though, is that I did kind of feel like we lost sight. While we do become the audience kind of observing Willy Wonka, and you are kind of hopping back and forth between how Willy Wonka is observing and stuff, and, and that is like the overall game, I did find myself like losing a sense of that connection with Charlie, which was the the thing that the movie hooked me in when the first 40 minutes is uh, we are living vicariously through Charlie. He's the character who we are latched onto. And then through a lot of the journey throughout the chocolate factory, you're not really in Charlie's perspective and you don't really cut to him a lot. And I, I did miss, I did, I did find myself craving that. The last thing I expected to, to say was, I just wanted to spend more time with Charlie while we're in the chocolate factory. And I, I do think that is one of the, the, like, cause while I, while I, I have two sides, two feelings about it, and it's possible I have two feelings and I got two feelings about it. One is I love being in the audience perspective and just watching Willy Wonka do, I keep wanting to call Willy Wonka, Charlie, uh, watching Willy Wonka do his thing. And then the other side is, oh, but I, I'm the character journey of being in Charlie's shoes and getting a little bit more nuggets of, of, of like maybe Willy Wonka observing Charlie and seeing how it contrasts against the choices that the other kids do. I did find myself missing some of that. But by the time you get to the finale, and, and I still really enjoyed the journey throughout the Chocolate Factory. I did. I like it's psychedelic. It's weird as hell. Um but I, I loved it. I, I did love it. And then when you do get to the, the final moments, it is, it is extremely touching and it, it does feel cathartic, you know, and, and earned it. And like, I can see how there's some things that maybe the story might not have aged as strong as people might. I don't know. I don't really give a shit. Like the one, the one thing that comes to mind is seems a little bit moralistic, you know. It kind of seems judgmental of people, but whatever. This is a fucking movie from the seventies, and it's a family film, and they're keeping it simple. They're keeping it simple, and I, and I really liked it. But but even if you do have that feeling, I think there's a lot of great morality lessons. There's a lot of like good cautionary tale stuff about um, things against the deadly sins, you know, greed, gluttony, uh, laziness, and, and uh, I. I feel like there is uh, like commentary on wealth disparity and uh, and also the appreciation of you know just like family and connection and the the simple the simple things of life you know and but also uh, the encouragement on imagination you know like the songs really speak a lot of volumes to that and 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 the value of of being a, a of maintaining integrity and. And um, I, I also imagine that there's probably some, um, I don't imagine, I think it's there in the movie, there, there seems to be like commentary too on, on parenting and, and the importance of how you raise a kid and how a lot of this is instilled in the value of like, because you got the grandpa, like the dad's not around for Charlie, but you got grandpa and Charlie and then here you're watching the relationship between a, like either a father and a a child or a mother and a child and you're watching how these children developed and how the parents kind of spoil them. And there seems to be a lot of uh, emphasis on parenting as well. And that how important that is to the development of a child. Uh, I, I really loved that aspect of it. And just um, overall, yeah, it's great. It's a great film with the enigmatic qualities of Willy Wonka, but there's just this, spirit of innovation throughout and while there's like some um cautionary tale elements to it with wonderful music and great performances solid direction all around and just a lot of heart it just has a lot of heart i thought this was a really solid film and i could see why it stands the test of time and I don't even I don't have no nostalgia for this and i i found myself very much moved and i'm very surprised by it just how much I ended up loving it. I thought I'd be more here going, you know, I really appreciated it. And I could see why people like it. But let me tell you why I think people really like it. Uh, I did not actually expect to walk out of this movie going, wow, I really did love it. Um, and, and I loved it before we even got to Willy Wonka. And that to me is a testament to this movie's strength. But guys, uh, how do you feel about Willy Wonka on the Chocolate Factory? Do you like the Johnny Depp one? 
And uh, are you excited for the Timothy Chalamet one? What is your favorite moment from here? Uh, if there's something I did not talk about that you wish talked about, well, you can talk about it in the comments below. Thank you again, and uh, I'll catch you all soon. Thank you guys so much for being here, Reject Nation. John, pick a name, any name. Oh, how about... <sighs> Maria Hammond. Maria Hammond, you know what you're getting for Christmas this year? Ooh. You're going to get, you know, I thought of a really dirty joke, and then I thought, you know, as, as close as we've gotten, mm -mm. I, I still am like... I feel like I'm one joke away from completely <laughs> ruining all goodwill we have established with each other, Maria. Mm. So now I'm not as confident. Careful, Should I yeah. just go for it? Is I this, think it's a it's super light, for... dirty <laughs> joke. It's like not even that dirty, but I was like, you know, we're always like, ah, you're like the mother on our Patreon, yeah. and you're like a son. And I was like, that was kind of weird if I made a dirty joke. Well, I, I mean, it depends on if the joke is about that context, I guess. All right, okay. There's a way to make both of this work. All right, yeah. Mar Maria, you're going to get a Polaroid of me naked this year. <laughs> and then you're going to go, Greg, you're like a son to me. You should be sending me these photos. Why would you taint Why our relationship this way? And I think if there's one thing you love more than receiving gifts is giving gifts. Oh, sure. And yeah. you will give me the gift, a lesson mm. in behavior of knowing when I'm crossing the line. Hey, and you gotta cross the line to find it. Based off of the scrutinization you dish my way mm -hmm. for being um, a callous with my behavior. Yes, it's, keeping you honest. So I appreciate you, Maria, always keeping me in check. My sweet, sweet, hot mom, you. <laughs> <laughs> Greggy's mom has got it going on yes, this she Christmas. Does. Yeah. Look and I'm going to get you a ham. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> and I'll get you some almonds. And then you can crust the ham. And it can be ham. Ham almonds. Where'd you get the al almond from? Uh, I thought the first half of Hammond is ham. And the second half is mund. And the second half of almond is also mund. So I was like. I'm getting her a Polaroid <laughs> of me naked. And you're getting her an almond. <laughs> you said you're getting her a ham. I can. I can uh, I'll paint now, the ham a, a self-portrait of myself. And in send it to, to her. In right. addition to the almond. Sorry about the letdown there, Maria. It's okay. Yeah, I uh, no, it's up to you to decide. It's okay. We love you, dear. Merry Christmas. I hope you have a good one with your family this year. You deserve it. You do. Mm -hmm.